So first and foremost, I want to preface this by saying that like I love Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur is probably my favorite fighting game. I love the creation aspect of it. I love everything pretty much that that game has to offer. And uh, I'm still going to keep playing all of the Soul Calibur games because I own them all. And that's probably not going to change anytime soon. It's just a series that is close and near and dear to my heart, and I love it. I have been doing a lot of Soul Calibur 7 content. There's a lot of evidence out there that was reaching towards the conclusion that Soul Calibur 7 was going to be coming sooner rather than later. And then a lot of things kept happening, and the perception of Soul Calibur 7 began to diminish, and not only was I seeing this affect my channel, I was also seeing this affect the discourse online. And whereas I would see people before that are like are constantly ecstatic about Soul Calibur news and content and speculation and stuff like that, there have been a vastly less amount of people wanting that. There has been a shortage of people that are asking for that type of content. And I've been making specifically Soul Calibur 7 content since 2020. So we're talking about like almost four years of Soul Calibur 7 content uh, specifically. Obviously I was covering Soul Calibur 6 before that came out and whatnot, but there has been a overall change to the narrative and the zeitgeist surrounding Soul Calibur and its potential sequel. I am still a very much in the camp that I think Soul Calibur 7 is coming at some point. They still haven't announced anything for uh, a new producer for the series yet after Okubo left. So while there are bountiful amounts of producers within Bandai Namco that could step up to take on the project, whether they will or whether the project get approved are two completely different things, two different stories. So we've heard some rumors about things like Motohiro Okubo saying that like, ask me in 10 years or whatever. And then that gets covered by other YouTubers like Maximilian Dude and that gets spread to other people. And there's a lot of people that watch them and they, kind of take what they say to heart. And I don't know if it, I would say they exactly just like believe what they say all the time regardless, but they definitely amplify their voices amongst other voices. So as much as I've tried to keep a garnered interest for Soul Calibur 7 alive, it has been very much diminishing, especially over the past like year. I do think that the game is still going to come at some point. I just don't know when, and I don't know who's gonna take on the project, and I don't know if Bandai Namco is going to properly green light it unless there's some stipulations involved among other things. And then there is the more personal account that I'm going to be giving with that I really don't want a Soul Calibur 7 right now. And I know that sounds crazy, especially for me, but there are reasons behind this. Uh, the first and foremost, the number one reason is I have been severely disillusioned by fighting games in this generation. There have been some diamonds in the rough that have actually impressed me like Street Fighter 6. And then there are others like Tekken 8 that have sorely left me wanting. And uh, it's not to say that the combat in those games are bad or anything like that, but a lot of people that follow Soul Calibur, like half the community are really into like character creation, the lore, the story, stuff like that. And the other half is like online. But that, uh, that first half takes up a big chunk of the community. Uh, the vast majority of people that follow me are into that sort of thing. And a lot of the ones that play online and such are still there, but to a lesser extent. And I think that in the industry that we're in right now, the way that games are being produced, the way that microtransactions are being handled and AI is starting to be utilized, I don't wanna be doom and gloom about it, but if a Soul Calibur 7 did come out sooner rather than later with all these practices intact, I think it would destroy the franchise for good. Like way worse than Soul Calibur 5 ever could. I think that there's reasons to believe like the character creation parts would be held back in favor of battle passes and the microtransactions that would allow you to earn way less in game would be far more prominent than it would be. And this is just proof of like how games have been running. Street Fighter 6 for example, while it has a very good world tour mode with a lot of uh, with character creation and a lot of single player experience to be had there, they did shock people after the fact the game was already out by introducing a battle pass, a very expensive battle pass. And um, it looked a lot like Fortnite. Um, I do play Fortnite, so I'm not gonna clown on that for that, but that's a free to play game. So I think when you're getting your monetization practices by paying for the development through those kind of microtransactions, it's in free games, but we're talking about games that are still 60, 70 dollars. 
um, plus the DLC that you're buying. So a lot of these like day one deluxe editions are like $110 plus then you have to subscribe to a battle pass. I think that's kind of scummy. And I know personally somebody who worked on Tekken 7 and I was talking to them throughout the development uh, of obviously I'm not going to share anything, but what we were talking throughout the development, they were saying that there is so much like character customization stuff in Tekken 8 that it blows Tekken 7 out of the water. But then something very strange happened when the game actually released. He said more than like, there was only like a third of what he actually was seeing in the, you know, testing phases. And uh, he didn't know where it was at. And then I'm like, okay, well, we're probably gonna get DLC packs. It's not a big deal. Virtual Fighter did it. He said that like there was like not a lot of stuff in there compared to what there is. And then like a month later into it, as we're enjoying Tekken, we get a battle pass announcement. And a lot of the character creation stuff and customization parts that were originally in the game that he was testing uh, or overseeing the testing process, the battle passes are not cheap. There's there is always a free tier to that, but they're also seasonal. So if you don't do the battle pass immediately and grind and grind and grind on the game constantly, you're not gonna unlock that stuff even if you're paying for the battle pass in the premium version. That locks you out of that content unless it comes back again at some point or sometimes forever. Uh, it's a big complaint on Fortnite when like people are late starters to the game and they'll be like, well, how come I can't get? But like, you can't get that character ever again. They don't come into the store. They don't, they're not in the rotation. It, you just had to be there to get it. And it creates this really annoying FOMO that a lot of people in fighting games also don't like, but especially the Soul Calibur community because it's such a special situation. I just can't see Soul Calibur surviving that. If Soul Calibur came out, Soul Calibur 7, like let's say tomorrow, and we're super excited about that, but then we go into the character creation and we're noticing that like, hey, where's a lot of the stuff that was in, you know, the last game? Where's all the stuff that's in 6? There's a lot, of, there's, there's stuff here, but not nearly as much. And it's like, okay, we're gonna get DLC. And then all of a sudden they announce a battle pass that you have to pay, let's say $10 for. And of course it's not just like, you know, something that you could just do on the PlayStation store. You have to like spend real money to get like a certain kind of in-game currency that can only be used for that, uh, which was what Tekken and, Sol and Street Fighter do. And then just getting, ruining all of the character customization by making people grind and grind and grind for gear that we already had, <laughs> or like very few new additions. So we'd have that aspect, and I know that like people, not only in esports, but also the competitive players and also the casuals and then the story buff people, no one's gonna be happy with that. And Soul Calibur already struggles with staying up in the big fighting games as it is with sales. So seeing people say that, I know plenty of people who are just like, oh, Battle Pass is in, I'm not buying the game, I'm skipping it. Um, these scummy microtransaction practices uh, that even affect like Mortal Kombat 1 and stuff, is just like, puts people off from actually purchasing or playing the game in general. So if Soul Calibur comes out and is needing to compete with sales, and we have battle passes and microtransactions and stuff like that, instead of just regular DLC, then a lot of people are just gonna put the game down or not pick it up in the first place, and it's gonna hurt the reputation of the franchise in general, and I don't think Soul Calibur can survive that. Other reason I was talking about that I started touching on before is the whole zeitgeist around Soul Calibur and the whole air of like how people are talking about it now, as opposed to then. Before Harada came out on Twitter, before Maximilian Dude uh, on the podcast with uh, the Triple KO podcast with like Matt McMuscles and Justin Wong, before they started sh like shooting out their doom and gloom <laughs> about it, there was still a lot of energy surrounding the franchise. There was still a lot of people that were calling for it, still people tagging on Twitter and doing a lot of stuff within the community. The tone has completely changed. If I go into my comment section and I start answering comments, like a lot of people will be like, well, why are you even making content on Soul Calibur? That game's never going to happen. Or Harada said this, or Maximilian Dude said that. And it's all references to outside sources that probably wouldn't have affected the game otherwise, but here's how it affects it now. Bandai Namco is a business and they have a marketing department and they have uh, focus groups and they have polling data and they go after the zeitgeist in a big way. They try to see they need to do with their game to make a buck, basically. And they are the ones that are gonna be coming online and searching for, let's say, hashtag Soul Calibur 7 or something, or Soul Calibur on Twitter, 
and seeing a bunch of cool fan art and stuff like that. But then they're also going to see a lot of the doomers like being like, this game's never going to happen. Um, or just an outright tonal shift from the energy that was perpetuated before. That's something that they're going to sit down and say, hey, is this even going to be profitable to make this game at this time? Like, not only are we going to be competing with ourselves and pot potentially taking away sales from Tekken 8 and uh, other projects that are releasing, but is anyone even going to buy this game? Is it worth putting the money into? And then even if it does get approved from that point and the budget's lower, you know it's going to release unfinished like all these games do these days, and you know it's going to have battle passes because Bandai Namco is nothing if not consistent when it comes to changes that they make. So if they if it was in Tekken 8, you can 100% guarantee it will be in Soul Calibur 7. You don't want to sit here and see a franchise that you love destroyed because of implementations of these practices that we know for a fact don't work and people don't like. So I, my goal would be to let it die down and then when if Soul Calibur 7 gets a new air of hype around it after like the hype from Tekken 8 has died down and all this other stuff, then I think that they can tackle the project. So that's another reason why you haven't seen that much Soul Calibur content on my channel. I've had to come up with a lot of like unique and weird ideas and series on the channel just to keep things alive because we were talking about a certain game for like four years before there's any kind of, you know, information or official confirmation that a game even is going to exist in the first place. It takes a lot out of you and there is a lot of hype there and people do get behind you and I do see a lot of support, but it's really a drag to make that kind of content knowing that like none of this might come to fruition. Well, I will still cover Soul Calibur if there's ever news or something I find interesting on like Twitter or something I just want to share. I've always strived to be honest with the people that watch me and the people that uh, are part of the channel, see how things play out, then I think we're going to be much better off for it. And I'm not, I can't guarantee that Soul Calibur is ever going to come back. I, I want to assume that it's going to. It's too popular of a franchise in my opinion for it just to die down like that. Um, especially with the success that was Soul Calibur 6. So that's gonna be the video for today guys. Thank you for watching um, There's not a poll for today because uh, I don't want to end it on that. So we're just going to end the video here um, Please give the video a like oh, and subscribe uh, I got more content coming down the pipeline that I know what to do with and there's a lot of fun to be had Join the discord. We can continue the conversation over there. And as I always say guys, I love it. Thank you And thank you Ivy Valentine subscribes to Mark Yoon, so should you. Enjoy your treat! <laughs>